But you know what? Like, it has been a busy sports world, and usually the NFL loves to dominate, but the NBA has said, oh, no, hello, hello. We are here. It is almost time, and and we have things to, to do. So they have been trying to take over football. Like, football ain't even had that much time to be here, NFL. And they're like, no, 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 no. So the other day, Tarika, I'm sure you've been following this news drop. We were like 20 minutes before we were about to go on air, and we, like, find out that... Damian Lillard has been traded to the Bucks, so everyone's like, "What?" Mm-hmm. You know, like we all knew Dame news was going to drop sometime. Um, I think a lot of people thought it was going to be Miami. There were like some rumors that it was like changing, maybe the Raptors, but like the Bucks weren't on anyone's radar. So at first, this was just like a shock because it was the Bucks, and then when people start to think about, oh, what the pairing of a Giannis and Dame could be, everyone started going crazy. So we've been talking about Dame Dalla, you know, nonstop, right? Dame has had all of our time. Um, and so as things continue to unfold, you know, the first two days is react thing and it's, you know, crazy predictions and all of that. But now we're starting to get more details about how this trade unfolded and what transpired. And Chris Haynes, he dropped a story yesterday evening. Um, and it's messy. Like the description is is so perfect, you know, (laughs) a messy divorce, um, there was just like a lot to unpack with with what he wrote. And, you know, I, like, I want to first start by saying that, like, I it's rare, not rare, but it's often that, like, when you do have these splits, right, and someone leaves a team, it is messy. So I guess it shouldn't be shocking, but I think because of what Dame has meant to Portland, what he's meant to that franchise, there are some who are saying he is the best blazer ever or, like, the most important, I say Clyde would like a word maybe but Clyde would like be- a word <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that being said that being said um I I just think I think everyone thought this was going to be like a, a a more amicable amicable part- parting and it didn't really play out like that and I don't I don't know where it went wrong based on what I read in the in the story it seems like you know Dame feels like they were misleading to him with some of the things that they told him they would do right and so I think that's some of it and then he finally you know implemented his trade demands but I don't actually think that he handled that that well either right so I I do think there is some fault and blame on 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 like both sides in terms of how this turned from being amicable to messy but um there was a lot in there and there was more but I'm gonna stop there and kind of get your thoughts on uh, how this is all unfolding with Dame and the Blazers. I I was ready to just kind of put this out the back of my mind until I read that story from Chris Haynes yesterday. And now I want to nominate the Portland Trail Blazers for a daytime Emmy because <laughs> this drama, <laughs> this drama is soap-like, right? Um, I think that you're right. There were a couple of things that could have been handled on both sides a bit better. Um, One thing that I don't understand why in the 50 plus years um, of us really being able to um, understand the dynamics of sports, do we continue to think there's some sense of loyalty that anyone will ever have? It doesn't exist. Like it just doesn't exist in sports. Uh, You have your few, maybe, who show loyalty to an extent that you believe that it's there, but it's not there. It doesn't exist. And so for Dame to kind of believe that for everything he's given to this franchise, for everything that he's done, for all of the moments that he has, um, believed that they would do the right thing with putting the pieces around him for um, even what we read in the story that allegedly he decided to um, sit out and shut down towards the end of the season. Ma'am, like these are things that you do, you know, and hashtag tanking is absolutely real. But these are the things that you do when you believe that a franchise or that people are going to be loyal to you because of the loyalty that you've given to them. And every single time we find out and we realize that the loyalty does not exist. So right. the whole idea that Dame had in thinking that they that there would re- really be um, some 
some conversation or some movement to get him to where he wanted to go to Miami. I feel like that was Dame's first mistake. They're not yeah. going to be loyal to what you want. They are always going to use whatever they have to, to make sure that the best interest of the organization is what they're going to put first. And if By that way, meant sending you job. to- that's the it's GM's the GM's job. job. And, <laughs> and I understand, and I understand that your agent is going to work for you. But when you are starting to go to the point where the NBA, where the league themselves have to come in and step in and say, Hey, you're, you're, you are swerving so far out of your lane that right. you are actually putting your client in a very precarious situation. Like that's where that's where things I believe are were starting to be missing. And so this is where the messiness was was really unnecessary, to be honest, um, because they, you should have known from the beginning they were going to do what they wanted to do. And if you were not ready for them to do exactly what they wanted to do, then you shouldn't have sent out a trade request. It's too late to try to come back. Max, oh, that two was months later. Me when I heard that, where he's just like, well, if it couldn't be Miami, he was willing to come back. How do you come back? First of all, you have Scoot, and other young players there. And it's just like, you basically said, I don't want to play with y'all. You've created all this. Like, you can't go back. The fact that I don't think they're foul for that. Like now maybe in the, where he says like, they didn't speak to him and you know, however, maybe it seemed a little testy. That, but like in terms of thinking they were going to allow you back, that does, that's not reasonable to me. Um, You've now asked for a trade. You've demanded it in a very public way. You've demanded it in a way that made yourself seem like you were not being reasonable, to be honest. Um, And I think at the end of the day that they actually still did right by you. You know, they sent you maybe not to like a premier thought of living destination, but it is a premier basketball destination. And ultimately, apparently he did ultimately tell his agent, like that was one of the teams he'd be willing to go to. And they made that happen. So I, I do feel like they still took care of him. But also I just gotta say like, why is Dame dry snitching? Maybe he doesn't owe any loyalty to like Portland, but come on. It's like, yes, they asked you to do that. It was also only 10 games left of the season. Y'all were not gonna do anything. And you also ultimately agreed to it, you know? So it's like, we all know That's the part, Nat. This, we That's all know the this part. On, but now the NBA is likely to look into it, but it's just like, Come on, like what what sense did it make for you to come back and play and do anything anyway? Like I get it, you're a competitor, but you were a part of that. So trying to like put it on them, like you were unwilling. Well, you still ultimately did it. You still sat out. And but now like you just put it on full blast, on full display. So I do expect we're going to hear the NBA is looking into it. And I thought that was, I was surprised by that. So yeah, yeah I don't know why yeah. he, believe he was getting... I don't know why he thought he could make those kind of demands without the contract leverage. I don't know why he thought that they owed him to only send him to a single destination that did not have the best to offer him. Like you're not owed that. They're not owed crippling their franchise for you. And so, you know, it's an unfortunate situation, but oh, well, it will be Dame time with Giannis. And now the clock is ticking because now those expectations are real. You're expected to go win a championship. I was just going to say, this is a team that literally won a championship a couple of years ago and was right in the thick of it last season. This is not a a reason for Dame to be upset. So I don't know if maybe your relationship with Jimmy Butler or whatever wanted you to be in Miami so bad, but from everything that I've seen, you and Giannis also have a great relationship for, for what the article detailed. You and Giannis also talked yeah. about having each other play with each other just no one wanted to budge on which city you guys wanted to play in so it's not like you're like you've been sent to the pistons and i love my city but i mean it ain't like you you right. know you're not in a rebuild you're you're legitimately playing on a team that has one of the best odds as you can see the top odds to to win a championship in 2024 so Ultimately, right. all of the messiness was kind of uncalled for and unnecessary because you're ultimately yep. going to get an opportunity to do what you were not able to do in Portland, and that's win a championship. But you kind of have had to have known and all of this time that you've been in this league and all of the friends that you've yes. made and all of the people that you've seen, you should know by now, no team, no GM has no loyalty to anyone. They're not going to do what you want them to do. They're going to do what's going to best suit them. You have got to be prepared for that. Unless 
unless you are a LeBron, a Giannis, oh. a Kobe from back LeBron. in the day, a Stephen Curry. No, I'm just saying you have to really be a Kevin Durant, a certain level player. And I only say this because Giannis gave the notice. He gave a demand. He said, I would be leaving if this does not get better. And they traded and got him Damian Lillard, which is why I was like, the headlines that came out, like Giannis wasn't consulted. Um, Giannis, honey, when you tell them that you're going to leave, they, they going to get you, someone's going to go. So I don't they know. Fired, they already get. fired their head coach. They already, yeah, fi- like that was the first sign. <laughs> right. You're not going to, you're not going to like get better without Drew or Middleton or someone going. So I just, I just thought that headline was sort of funny. Giannis wasn't consulted. Um, boo boo. Like the you once you gave the notice, that was it. There was no consultation that was gonna have. So I feel like this kind of stuff comes out because players want to look like they don't want to look bad. Like I didn't ship my teammates out, but bro, like you kind of publicly said like we're not good enough to win and you got to get better. So they got better they upgraded but like now you gotta live with that too it was on your orders you know what i'm saying so but you're yeah. Giannis, and because you're Giannis, you can make that happen so anyways i i hope i i actually admittedly i'm gonna tell you i i love mess so i hope we do hear more because i love mess hey thank you for watching brother from another if you haven't hit that subscribe button go ahead and do that now don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.